Sean Hughes, aka Little Red, sunrise 3rd of July 2002, sunset 12th of January 2018. From the first breath you've taken, you were always, were always been an inspiration. Sean was an up and coming rap artist who wrote and, song, wrote and performed all his own songs and wrote his own material. He performed in the Aviva Stadium, Croke Park, the National Concert Hall, and just to name a few. Sean's music can be heard on Facebook and SoundCloud and YouTube. He was a very fashion conscious young man. He loved to, have, loved to be dressed in the latest designer brands and friends of Sean would call him their own model. He was quick to help others and were very proud to call him our son. Sean had no underlying health issues. He was a healthy lad. On Friday morning, the 12th of January, the 12th of January 2018, we lost our amazing son, Sean due to sepsis, and he was only 15 years old. We never heard of sepsis before Sean, it took Sean from us. So on Monday the 8th of January, Sean came home from school and told his mum he wasn't feeling very well. He was displaying fluid-like symptoms, which are similar to symptoms of a chest infection, a persistent cough, a crackling sound in his chest, breathlessness, shallow breathing, aches in his muscles and a high temperature. On Tuesday the 9th, of January, he was feeling slightly better. The next day, Wednesday the 10th, Sean's mum, Karen, took Sean to the family doctor. The doctor examined and treated Sean for a, family, uh, for a chest infection with a flu-like symptoms and prescribed him antibiotics. The doctor stated that Sean had a high fever and a very bad chest infection. She was concerned that it might uh, progress into pneumonia. The GP sent Sean home. Karen started Sean on the antibiotic and he was coughing up a lot of phlegm. Sean couldn't sleep at all that night. On Thursday night, the 11th of January, John was sitting, Sean was sitting on the sofa in the living room watching TV with his mum. Karen was talking to Sean one minute and the next morning he was unresponsive. Karen called for me as I was upstairs. I ran down the stairs and seeing that Sean was unresponsive and not breathing. I immediately removed Sean from the sofa, placed him on the floor, I checked his airways and I began, I began CPR. Karen phoned the ambulance and I continued to do CPR until the paramedics arrived. They took over and asked, asked us the way out in the hall. They asked us, did Sean take anything and we, just, and we said, just the antibiotic. They asked if Sean had any underlying health issues and we answered no. They asked us if, they, if, Sean, if they were going to take Sean to the hospital. The paramedics put Sean in the gurney, took him into the, in the ambulance and brought him into Temple Street Hospital in Dublin at 20 past 12 in the morning. And we followed in their car as they wouldn't let anybody go in the, hospital, in, in the ambulance with Sean. The doctors in A&A &A, A &A in Temple Street Children's Hospital went to work immediately, assessing and examining Sean. We were asked to wait in the family room and we were kept updated. Again, we were asked to Sean's medical history if he had any underlying health issues. And again, we said no, he was a fit and healthy lad. The doctors in the, in the hospital were baffled. They had no clue what was wrong with Sean. One doctor told us that if Sean was to survive, there would be some damage to his brain as a result of the lack of oxygen. After a while, we were told that the doctors wanted to do an MRI scan on Sean and moved, moved him up into, into the intensive care unit. They also mentioned that we might like to have some family and friends around us. They said that all indications are that Sean would not pull through and it was only a matter of hours until he passed away. Sean passed away on the 12th of January. Friday the 12th of January, he was six months away from his 16th birthday and our world will never be the same again. We were officially informed of Sean's inquest that the cause of death was, sep <coughs> was sepsis. We've never heard of sepsis before this. We were never educated on the killer called sepsis, which stole our son's life. At no time was the word sepsis mentioned to Karen or me, myself, by the family doctor, the paramedics, or the hospital doctors. We are educating ourselves about sepsis and we're shocked at the level of the lack of the, the level, the low level of public awareness in Ireland around the global uh, medical emergency. 
Early recognition and rapid treatment is the key to surviving sepsis. There are eight deaths every day in Ireland from sepsis. Any infection can lead to sepsis. There are almost 15,000 sepsis uh, cases recorded in Ireland every year, resulting in an average of 3,000 deaths. Sepsis kills more people in Ireland every year than breast cancer, prostate cancer, and AIDS combined. Sepsis does not discriminate against age, gender, or strength. So where is the awareness? So Little Red's Legacy Sepsis Awareness Campaign and my members of the public that have signed the petition are asking the Minister for Health, Mr Simon, uh, Stephen Donnelly and the HSE's National Sepsis Programme to produce and fund an advert on Irish National TV showing the public how to recognise the symptoms of sepsis. When we met with the previous Minister for Health, uh, Mr Simon Harris, in late 2019, he gave us an assurance that funds will be allocated in the budget to ramp up public sepsis awareness. He, he also requested that members of the HSE's National Sepsis Programme who were present at the meeting in Leicester House to keep us updated in the progress. Mr Harris also mentioned at the meeting that the sepsis initiative would be rolled out to schools. Unfortunately, none of this was followed through. Minister, Minister Harris uh, left his role from, as Minister of Health in June 2020. And the present Mr. Uh, Minister of Health, Mr Stephen Donnelly, has very unfortunately, for one reason or another, not had a meeting with us to discuss the public awareness. And the National Sepsis Programme have failed to follow up and keep us posted. In a letter forwarded to us by the uh, petitions, uh, petition case manager dated the 9th of December 2022, Mr Ray Mitchell has said a priority to continue the focus on sepsis awareness campaign uh, awareness in September. The, the programme will in 2023 monitor how the campaigns run to establish their effectiveness and type campaigns. In another email dated the 19th of October again, forward, forwarded by the petitions case manager the same Mr Ray Mitchell states that, he, he, uh, with this in mind, the programme is applying for funding to develop a national television programme. So, just, we've had three, three emails and two emails saying, yes, they're going to do it. And the last email, they come in and say, no, they're going to, only going to concentrate on their efforts on, in September, which is uh, World Sepsis Month. The 13th of September is World Sepsis Day. So, the HSE think that, you know, the, the, just for that uh, four weeks of the year in September, that they're going to concentrate on that alone. But what about the, 11, the other 11 months of the year? Um, it is shocking to see, now, now that we know that sepsis deaths are preventable, <clears throat> and all it takes is early recognition or, and rapid treatment. So that, that's it there, lads. Yeah, thanks. Uh, oh. Uh, before I let in others, uh, I'd like to pass our condolences to you and your family and the debtors, Sean. And it's frightening when I read your closing and our opening statement, and I apologise for the ignorance that I had in regards to sepsis. I didn't realise that the figures are as high. Yeah. And now, it's them, them figures, sorry, them figures come from the order, the, 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 um, the National Statistics, Statistics Office and the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland. If we were to make up them figures, we wouldn't make them as shocking as the truth. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm looking at the symptoms, and I suppose every one of us has had something like that to realise that it could be something more serious, yeah. and it is in an awful lot of cases. Uh, look at that. Paul McCall was here as well, and Paul has raised it as well through PQs, and I thank Paul for raising it. <coughs> the big thing I have about it is it just seems to be so little money that's involved here. And as you said yourself, we have awareness for cancer speed, numerous things, and every one of them are justified and required. But to think that we have eight deaths a day and 3,000 a year, and for such small money that there isn't a massive campaign to make people aware of it. Because if we had 
and like, I don't like comparing it, but if we had that today in road accidents or something, there would be uproar if there, there wasn't uh, an awareness campaign involved. Look, I'll ask you more questions later, I didn't remember us. Uh, Eugene, can I let Paul, Paul is in, in and out. I was going to suggest because Paul knows these people. Yeah, well, he's in and out to the package. Yeah, that's fine, so, that's fine. And I'll bring and you in to Paul. Yeah, Gormaga, okay, here, look, and I'm conscious <coughs> that, uh, just first of all, to welcome Joe and Darren and, and Charlie with us today. Um, I, I first met Sean when he was rapping at the Finglas Festival. Um, and uh, we had a programme and we had loads of kids on and off the stage and uh, Sean's group were so popular, he ran out of time and he, they kept going and they kept going. And of course we rushed him off the stage and I've said this to Karen and Joe, I wish I, wish I hadn't rushed him off the stage that day because we didn't know how, how little time he had ahead. Uh, so I never got to know Sean, uh, I suppose, the way that I have uh, Karen and Joe uh, and, all, and all the family, really, and all the all the lads who are friends with, with Sean. Uh, but, Carrie, look, the, the, the Joe is here today not because of any support I've given him, uh, because it was Joe that discovered the petitions process on the Rockets website. It was Joe that uh, made the application. Um, it was uh, it was Joe that had the determination. And I think anybody that knows anything about sepsis will know that Joe's the determination and Karen's patience for Joe's determination um, has has been absolutely su su superb and like that comes at a cost for anybody who's lost lost a child um, because you're giving your time that maybe you should be spending on healing yourself but you're giving it so that other people don't go through uh, the same experience and I want to pay tribute to Darren Nomani as well uh, who I suppose independently of all of that has seen the pain that many other families have gone through uh, for, uh, for, uh, for sepsis uh, and has established the sepsis foundation and it'd be interesting Darren to hear a little bit more about that from from your own perspective as well uh, remarkably two or three years after Sean died, my own uncle passed away uh, with, with, with sepsis. And like that, we didn't know, or his wife didn't know uh, the symptoms uh, and wasn't able. And even though all of the awareness that had been created in Finglas because of Sean's death, and you would think that everybody would have a good awareness of it, uh, just it's so difficult to spot the signs and symptoms. So that's why a public awareness campaign is so, is so important. Uh, I, I acknowledge that the Minister has agreed to meet uh, Joe uh, later this month, and I think that's important. But I put in parliamentary questions in 2018, 19, 20 and 21 in regards to what was spent on it. And you're right, Cahir, look, it's very small money here, you know. Now, there's two elements to it. Uh, like, there's small amounts of money spelt, spent on leaflets and T-shirts and stands. Um, but Joe would say that it's hard to see the evidence of where they've been used and what they've been used for. And then there's large amounts of money that has been allocated. Um, and I'm looking at last year, 47,000 spent for a GP sepsis lead for 12 months, or 87,000 spent in 2019 for an e-learning and education uh, system. And again, I think it's very hard to see, while well, obviously equipping GPs and creating an awareness for GPs, it, it's hard to see, and for, for a family that so has been so invested in this for the last five years, I'd like to see the HSE uh, explaining what the practical impact of these, this spending is. Um, and now it's not just Karen and Joe. There is that wider group that, that Darren uh, and many other people that have worked with you uh, have, have established. So I just want to pay tribute to all these for all of that. I suppose the TV ad is one symptom of what a, t what a, what a, a public awareness campaign. I no doubt, guys, you would like to see far more I see that you created a, an, your own radio ad, which I'm sure was expensive for you guys, but probably would be inexpensive for the HSE. So could you talk to us, perhaps during the first part, talk to us a little bit about the Sepsis Foundation and where you see a public awareness campaign go, which would include a, a TV ad. Thank you very much, Debbie, and thank you for the tireless work that you have been doing over the past several years for the Hughes family and for others. And uh, just um, following up on those figures that you mentioned there, I'd like to add to that that there, there are some oddities in those figures. Um, for example, the fifth annual Sepsis Summit cost 1,845, that was in 2018. And then the sixth summit in 2019 cost 10,502 euro. Seems like a staggering increase in spending. And furthermore, um, I see that 27,300 euro was spent on e-learning in 2021, when 87,950 euro had already been spent in 2019. 
And now that's a lot of uh, a lot of funds. And I suppose for people like uh, Joe and other families, um, you know, these are eye-watering figures. But what we want to see is tangible evidence of a commitment to um, driving meaningful change in highlighting and raising awareness of sepsis. So with that in mind, um, uh, we founded our uh, charity last year in September, which is Sepsis Awareness Month. And we are delighted to have Joe and uh, Karen on board as members, uh, in addition to a number of others. I had the idea for the charity because um, through the course of my own legal work over the last decade, I had seen sepsis recur as a theme throughout the cases I was dealing with. Repeatedly, I was seeing cases involving uh, people dying from sepsis. I was seeing sepsis um, listed on death certificates um, at coroner's inquests. And I was meeting people whose lives had been absolutely destroyed by this condition. And as you rightly point out, it's, it's, it's quite startling when one considers how, how prevalent it is, um, but also how eminently treatable it is. And we're not looking for anything groundbreaking here. Um, I think to be fair to Joe um, and, and to be fair to, to this petition, um, we're not asking for the sun, the moon and the stars. We're not looking for a cure. There is a cure. What we're looking for is uh, simply awareness amongst members of the community. And I'd just like to point to the, the, the sixth National Sepsis Outcome Report of 2020, and that was published in May of last year. And uh, on the second page of that uh, report, the authors outline six processes which must occur to give patients the best opportunity to survive sepsis. And the first of those is that the unwell person, their family or carer, must be aware of the signs and the symptoms of sepsis and the need to seek early medical review. And following on from that, we're asking, well, what exactly is being done? If this has been identified year on year by the HSE, what is being done? Why does sepsis remain the silent killer that nobody knows about until it visits their household? Um, regrettably, we have, as a charity, no um, funding from the department or from the HSE. And we're reliant on the goodwill of people like Joe and the Corcoran family from Cork who lost um, Tracy, who's, who's actually, whose 40th birthday it would have been today had she not lost her battle with sepsis in June 2020. We're reliant on the goodwill of people like those um, to keep this charity going. Um, and so I suppose I'm here on behalf of the Irish Sepsis Foundation just to lend our voices to the petition. And it might be interesting just to draw your attention to a comparator, and that is the case uh, of Scotland, our near neighbour, with, I would say, a similar enough population to Ireland. They have, I think, 5.3 million people uh, living in Scotland. Um, broadly speaking, same life expectancy and, and, and quality of life and so on. And um, in Scotland, in 2018, uh, £70,000 funding was secured, uh, and that was given by the Scottish Government, and it was used to deliver Scotland's sepsis charity campaign, and a part of that was a television advert. And that advert in Scotland was extremely effective. Um, the Health Secretary of Scotland agreed to the campaign back in 2017 after meeting with a campaigner, Craig Stobo, who lost his wife, Fiona, and their unborn daughter, Isla, to sepsis. Um, and it was on foot of that meeting that the funding was secured. And subsequently, a survey was conducted in Scotland and 77%, uh, I believe, of the people surveyed said that they understood what the signs and symptoms of sepsis were after that campaign and after that television advert. So I suppose what I would say is that something similar should occur here. Um, and as you've rightly pointed out, Deputy, it wouldn't be a huge amount of money for the department to spend. Chair, I know I'm probably over my time, but could I ask Joe one other question? Yeah. Just just to highlight Darren's point, Joe, I've heard you time and time again talk about the messages you've received from people um, who, because of your very small campaign, uh, <coughs> with a big impact, but 
it, it has had a real impact in, in saving Absolutely. people's lives, hasn't it? Could you give us an example of some of those stories that, that you've heard and, and an idea of how many could be saved if we were to have a national campaign on it? I'll just, just, just to say that our campaign is mostly down. We, mostly social media, we go to schools and colleges, we give the SEPs awareness talk and we've been at a couple of business events. We, we would go anywhere to, to spread the, the life-saving message. I am. Um, we're up to 30, 30 plus people at least that have been in touch in the last five years saying that their life or a, or a loved one's life has been saved because of Little Red's Legacy Sepsis Awareness Campaign. That they knew the signs and symptoms, they knew to get themselves in the hospital, they knew they had, the, they had, the, they had the, the confidence to ask could it be sepsis and that question saved their life and they wouldn't have known otherwise. You know, the, the, the HSE, they, they, we're not taking away from the work that they do, but, you know, one of the main things that they, they concentrated on telling us over and over, that they were at the National Plowing Championship spreading awareness. Well, where I live, nobody goes to the National Plowing Championship. And then I was told, well, the, the, the material is online. But not everybody is computer literate or has a computer or has access to the to Wi-Fi, so like we we thought we told the HSE that we think it would be better better money and energy and time spent in going to schools and going to clinics, sports clubs like we do, and give the SEPs awareness talk because that's where it's needed. But again, yeah, toward the people, lives are being changed because of what we do. Um, you know the. the one person, one person, for example, you, you know, I, I wouldn't like to mention names, but you know, the, the, the young child was taken into hospital and they were fobbed off, they were told, you know, it, it's a stomach bug, it's gastro. And they went and they got a second opinion and it was sepsis. And now that we, what we know about sepsis is it's very time dependent. And that's why uh, uh, awareness of it is very important. That, you know, early recognition of rapid treatment. And I can't, can't get that enough across, you know. The HSC have the e-learning and the, the staff should be up to, up, to, up to scratch on what they do. But, you know, this information needs to be in the parents' hands. <coughs> Who knows my son better than his mother? Who knows anyone's child better than their mother, their father, their, their, their guardian? So the information should be in the public's hand. And, and, and sorry, Joe, you've had some success in terms of um, obliging some of the authorities to create awareness. So I know Dublin Fire Brigade, for example, have the sepsis message on the side of the thing. I think the HSE have created a whole campaign in Little Red's image, uh, yeah. his red hair, um, and, and, and that that's the basis of some of the print material. So there's a lot of stuff there that could just be scaled up, isn't there? Absolutely. You know, you know, there is stuff there. Um, we worked with the HSE to uh, produce um, a paediatric uh, um, video and a leaflet and you know one of the events that we had we wanted we, we got onto the HSE and we asked could we get a number of those leaflets to give out and we were we were told we go oh, they're printable you can print them out but like you know uh, so we went to the local we went around Dublin and to the to the clinics and the doctor's offices and there was no information you have these boards in hospitals and in doctors and and you have everything from uh, pregnancy, cancer, head lice, stroke, but nothing about sepsis. And now knowing how prevalent sepsis is, it's shocking that there's no information there. So we got onto the HSE and we asked them, could we have some, some for our, uh, for one of our um, events? So I was told, we don't really have any, but we have some left over from an event that we had, come into Dr. Stevens and collect it. So we did. And I was given a box of it, you know. And we went around Dublin, we went around all the clinics, and, and, and myself and Karen and some, some of our, our campaign supporters, we filled them boxes ourselves in the clinics, in the doctors. We consent, we were told to go ahead. But you know, like, like, you're going, going into the doctors and they're left empty, which is a real shame, because the time and effort was put there to put them up, and the idea was to have something in them, not, not leaving them bare. Um, we 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 have we've got our own cards done up and 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 uh, car stickers and fridge magnets and 
we've done all that ourselves and, and we go around, we give them out with our events. And uh, in Dublin and in, look, at uh, started in Dublin. It's all over Ireland now and it's going international too. You know, if we had the resources and the budget that the HSE has, to, uh, we could put the, that energy into a separate awareness advertisement on Irish television, because every telly has a home, every, every home has a telly, or a radio, because the, the radio the radio ad was great. We, and we phoned it there ourselves, we done that. You know, even, even, even then we would have thought that someone from the agency would have reached out to do with that. You know, we go back there, the, the, the Stauntons uh, are a family that were, were, were originally, I think, from, from Cork. They're from more than on Mayo. They're over in America now. They lost their son, Rory, to sepsis. Um, he had a cut in his elbow and, and, and went to sepsis. They were over here in December getting an award from the president for the, the, the work they do around sepsis awareness in America. Uh, they they done a, a, a report that 72% of, of the Irish population don't know what sepsis is. 72% don't know what it is. You know, why is it being kept? Why is it such a secret? Why is it, why is it not known about? Why, at the, years ago, it was called blood poisoning. Then it was called septicemia, and now it's called sepsis. Well, if that's water, it's going to be water in 10 years' time. It's going to be water. Why change the name of it? Public awareness is the key. Rapid, early diagnosis and rapid treatment. And the treatment for it isn't isn't very expensive. It's antibiotics and oxygen in a hospital setting. The amount of lives, energy and, and time would be saved by having an ad on the telly. Yeah. Well, uh, just coming across before I let you